talk about some of the details to this whole Manchester bombing, this whole uh, Ariana Grande Manchester bombing um, situation that had happened in, in right in the center of England, right in the center of England. So there, I have a map that says that Manchester is right in the middle. I have a picture of the eight-year-old girl. This is an Ariana Grande concert, so a lot of the 22 victims were children. So this should, you know, make you think about the 30 civilians who were killed with the Yemen strikes. So those were also, many of them were children and uh, women, and there was an eight-year-old girl too. So Trump had killed an eight-year-old girl, you know, two or three months ago. So I got that picture. And then there's the picture of the actual terrorist. So, or, yeah, and it sounds like he is, he absolutely is a terrorist, 100% an Islamic fundamentalist terrorist. So, that's absolutely true, too. So, the thing that we don't know is we don't know why he did it. We don't know his motive. He didn't have a MySpace. He didn't have a Facebook. He didn't have a note in his pocket. He didn't write a note on the door. ISIS, you know, takes the credit. They can't wait to jump up and take the credit. And then they're just, uh, part of their propaganda is using people who are just self-radicalized upon, you know, on their own and who just does shit on their own accord. So we don't know why he did it. And we have some hunches, there's some possibilities, but we don't know why. And that's important if you want to actually address terrorism. Well, find out what this man's problem was. It sounds like he's got ties in Libya. They're waving a, an Iraq Iraq flag for a bit there, so perhaps the atrocities in Iraq, perhaps shit that's going on in Libya. Now, his family were from Libyan uh, immigrants, they were refugees, and they were running away from the Gaddafi regime. So they were against Gaddafi about 10 years ago, moved to Manchester, the United Kingdom. While they're in Manchester, you have, um, you know, they're going around with the local mosque, and the man knows, he sings really well, the father does, and uh, he's very devout, but he hates jihad, and he hates ISIS. And then the mosque that they went to, this dude, Salman Ramadan Abedi, so Salman Ramadan Abedi, he went to the mosque, and there was a moment when he didn't, the Ayman didn't talk about ISIS, and then the guy goes up to him and says, hey, why, how come you talk bad about ISIS, huh? And it said that he had a face of hate. And then it said um, they were very clear in their denunciation against the first. They denied, well, who? We don't know him at all. Cause the, and actually their, ch their mosque is a church. So they took over a church. So it looks like, you know, big steeple, and I don't think there's a cross on it, but it's, you know, a huge building. So it's a huge social gathering. So churches could, you know, very well be used for revolutionary um, meetings. We all could actually meet in the church and uh, give a shit and actually care about one another. All right, so let's get to some of these facts. Now, uh, something that we know for sure is that May... Prime Minister David Cameron, he had devised a plan, Operation Temperer, to temper it down, you know, simmer down now. So the plan was leaked to the press, and that's what they've employed, Operation Temperer, where 5,000 military personnel are now being deployed to police key locations. So that's to be expected. They're going to crack down. Um, against civil liberties of the population. There was one lady who was sitting there saying that we need to uh, put these Muslims into concentration camps. We need to give them a concentration camps and we need to um, round up at least, you know, 5,000 people or whatever. So let's just start arresting people. Trump had mentioned it, of course, with his brilliant eloquence. He says that uh, these bombers were evil losers. Well, there's only one loser if they're a loser, you know, but his objective was successful. So, 
uh, maybe, you know, maybe it was out of desperation. Maybe he didn't like his life. I don't know. He's 22 years old, and that's why I think it's important. If he says the reason why I bombed, you know, um, this concert was because of the atrocities in Syria, because my friend did this, because of this specific action, but if it's just a general hatred of all things West, well, there's not much we can do about that. Because we can stop the bombing, we can stop the terrorism, but if you just hate the West, just to hate the West, the ISIS, they're saying, well, we are taking the war to the land of the Crusaders. That's what we're aimed to do. So, you know, they very much welcome the Omar Mateens of the world, the Orlando shooter. So let's start from the beginning. So the terrorist is 22-year-old Salman Ramadan Abedi. So Salman Ramadan Abedi is 22 years old. He was born in Britain. So he's a British citizen. He's British th through and through. He's born there in 1994. His parents came from Libya, but 1994, that means he's been, what, for 20, his whole fucking life, two decades. His entire life has been living inside of uh, the UK, inside of Manchester, like the second largest city in the UK. He was born in Manchester. He is the Manchester suicide bomber, and that was another thing. So there's two big things we don't know. One, what was his motive? Why did he do it? And then the other thing we don't know about is exactly how he did it. So I'm sure there might be some video footage of this. But there have been different reports that he had a bomb strapped onto him. And then there's another report that he had bombs detonated. Bombs were put over there. And then he had himself killed. And then there's actually CCTV um, surveillance video. So there's surveillance video of the entire incident, of the explosion, of him doing his, you know, bullshit. So Salman Abedi, 22 years old, was reportedly known to security services. Uh, he was thought to have returned from Libya as recently as this week. A school friend told the Times he went to Libya three weeks ago and came back recently, like days ago. So that means he was there for about two weeks, right? So he just came from Libya. Now, Betty was born in Manchester, grew up in the tight-knit Libyan community that was known for its strong opposition for Colonel Muammar Gaddafi's regime. So if they were strongly against Gaddafi, they would be our friends, right? Since the West helped to overthrow Libya, since the West helped to overthrow Libya, they were opposed to Gaddafi, so they should be our friends, right? They're like the Cuban exiles who hate Castro, and they like us because we hated Castro, right? We hated Gaddafi. They hated Gaddafi. We, but uh, apparently that isn't what had happened. It said that he became radicalized recently. So he's 22 years old, just went to Libya, came back, and it was within this year, maybe last year, but within a short amount of time is when he became radicalized. He was born the second youngest of four children. In 1994, the Bedai's parents were Libyan refugees who fled the UK to escape Gaddafi. His trips to Libya were as thought his parents returned in 2011 following Gaddafi's overthrow are now subject to scrutiny, including links to jihadists. So that's a strong possibility. Was it because of Libya? What was it about Libya? I wish it was like, you know, I wish they would write, you know, this down. Um, so we can better understand what it is, and then if we can solve, you know, pre precautionary medicine is better than emergency room medicine. It's cheaper. So if we can prevent the underlying reasons for why the thing happened to begin with, then we stop terrorism. If we're being serious about stopping terrorism, then we would, you know, why did you do that? Well, you know, maybe the discrimination. Okay, we'll stop discriminating, right? But if it was like, well, you drew a picture of Muhammad, well, get the fuck over yourself. It's a free country. And if you don't like, you know, sort of the West freedom of speech, you don't like freedom of speech, that's a human right. So the Abedi home in Ellsmore Road, a nondescript brick, red brick terrace, neighbors told how Abedi had become increasingly devout and withdrawn. One guy said he didn't really like him. He grew a beard. He seemed like he had an attitude. He could have just been racist. I don't know. Just some dude said some shit in one of these articles. So it's thought that's where his parents were in Libya, that they had returned in 2011 following Gaddafi's overthrow. They headed Gaddafi. They got the hell out. Gaddafi's overthrown. They went back. And so, but 
I've also heard another report where the father was in Libya, but the mother was still in Manchester. So Lena Ahmed, 21, said, They're a Libyan family. They've been acting strangely. A couple of months ago, he, Salman, was chanting the first Kalma, Islamic prayer, really loudly in the street. He was chanting it in Arabic. He was saying there's only one God, and the Prophet Muhammad is his messenger. The Abedis are very religious. Supposedly most of the family had returned to Libya, leaving only Salman and his older brother Ismail, Ishmael, no, Ismail, behind. They've not been there for quite a while. Different people come and go, says Ellen Kinsey, 52, a car delivery driver who lives across the street. Mr. Kinsey's wife, Frances, 48, a caretaker, said she believed that the parents had left before Christmas and just one or two men had been living on the property. So uh, Mr. Kinsey had a huge flag, possibly Iraqi or Libyan, had been hanging from their house. So that's important. Is it the Iraqi flag or the Libyan flag? Okay. Um, I, that just goes to sort of two different things, kind of similar with our relationship to both of those countries. Um, but, you know, it, we're beginning to target exactly what had pissed off this guy. And then it said he blew himself up. So, again, I don't know if he blew himself up with a bomb strapped onto him or if he detonated the bombs and I don't know what stood over top of them or what else he could have done that was differently. But it's not clear exactly how the bomb was detonated and how he, you know, presented himself. So the police blasted the door of the family home at 11.30 a.m. According to locals, two helicopters and at least 30 police officers in camouflage, riot gear, and shields arrived for the raid. The police were very heavily armed, all of them. It was something like out of a war scene. It was terrifying. All 30 of them arrived in camouflage and riot gear, removed the wooden fence between the two properties. They then attached a black strip to the door, and there was a loud explosion. The door came off its hinges. The windows were shaken. The whole operation lasted about 90 seconds. And then nobody was brought out of the house. So they blew up his house, right? Blew up, you know, took the fence down, blew down his door. Nobody's in the house. And this is, you know, expected. It just happened. They're going after the, you know, people. What one guy did, you know, people fucking lose their minds. People just go crazy. I don't, you know. Okay, so he murdered 22 people, injured 59 others. And that's another thing we know, too. So we know that there's going to be a right-wing... Uh, extremist response. Hey, let's uh, put more money into the military. Let's bomb more Muslim countries. Let's restrict more of our freedoms and our movement and our rights. And uh, that will just piss off the people. That will just, um, you know, uh, further bombing more Muslims. That might have been the reason he wanted, you know, to destroy us to begin with or to, to destroy the uh, Crusaders, um, the Britons. The whites. Okay, so 59 people were injured, 22 people were murdered. Salman Ramadan Abedi, he was born in Britain, he's of Libyan descent. The 22 year old's identity was eventually found out after the United States passed the information to news reporters against the wishes of the police and security services in the UK. So they weren't even going to tell us who the fuck the guy was. So he had learned the Quran by heart. Salman Ramadan Abedi did. Abu Ismail, it was terribly distraught. He was always very confrontational with the jihadi ideology, and this ISIS thing wasn't even jihad, it's criminality. The family will be devastated. So they're saying that the father would not be happy with any of this. Witnesses said a loud explosion was followed by screams, panic, and a stampede of people trying to leave the crowded building, which is one of the largest indoor arenas in the world. Ariana Grande was not among those injured. Her representative said the incident was reported about 10.30 p.m. Local time, local time after Grande left the stage and house lights came on. So it just happened a day or two ago. Today's May 24th. And so 20,000 people were in attendance at the sold-out show. Many teenagers and young people came out. So um, as the show shut down, they're leaving, they're exiting the arena, and then I heard it was by the foyer where the McDonald's thing is. I have actually a map of that, too, um, of the building and of where the explosion was. So it was only one part, right, only one bomb out of the whole concert, so it was only one corner of the arena. They said he detonated an improvised explosive device. Where did he get the materials? What was it exactly made of? And supposedly it had nails and shit in it. 
so it was one of those bombs that blow up and shoot nails out all over the place. Um, many children were hurt. Authorities said it, it, it appears he timed the attack for when fans exited the building for maximum damage in an area just outside the security perimeter. Abedi's idea was found at the scene. He was tracked by CCTV cameras. The New York Times reports he's believed to have traveled from London to Manchester by train prior to the attack. Abedi was previously known to British authorities, um, CBS News reports. So that's interesting. The thing about the train, he could have blew up the train. Maybe it was important for to be an Ariana Grande fucking concert. Um, in terms of body count, I would assume he probably could get a substantial amount of body count. And did he carry all that stuff onto the train with him? So the Times of London reports he was known to security services because of a connection to fellow Manchester native Raphael Holsty, an Islamic State recruiter killed in 2016 in a drone strike in Syria. So they're just kind of pulling at straws here, right? But they're saying, hey, you know, there's a guy in the neighborhood uh, Raphael Holste, maybe he had something to do with it. We killed him last year in a drone strike. And maybe he's doing it for revenge, but I think the chances of Raphael Holste and this guy knowing each other. So it was a backpack bomb. So he had a backpack. It was a nail bomb attack. Says he blew himself up. The bomber took the tube to Victorian Station, went to the ticket area of the arena, and detonated an explosive device as people left. The concert investigators found ball bearings at the scene and have traced the bomber's movements through CCTV cameras. The cameras recorded the movement. He detonated the bomb. Betty's parents came to Britain as refugees, but he was born in Manchester and was studying at Salford University. I saw him last year, and he had a beard thing going on. We didn't speak, but nodded to each other. I don't remember seeing him with a beard before. He always had an attitude problem. I can't say I really liked the man, Leon Hall, Hall said. So, Leon Hall, are you just being a racist, or did he, I mean, he always had a bit of an attitude. Was he a proud man, and it just, you know, bothered you? His father is, bully, is believed to be from Tripoli, while his mother, Samia, is thought to be in Manchester. So, his father is thought to be in Tripoli, and his mother, Samia, is thought to be in Manchester. So, you know, there's a lot of contradicting reports. Some say that they both left. Now, this one's saying that Samia is there, and his father is in Tripoli, which is Libya. The ISIS statement says multiple devices were detonated, while officials say there was only one explosion. ISIS has at times claimed an attack when it had no direct role in the planning and execution of it, but it did not influence, uh, but did influence a supporter to kill on its behalf. So ISIS, I, well, I'm betting you, ISIS had nothing to do with the planning and the execution. He might have met a couple of guys, whether they're ISIS or not, I don't think so, um, it may be terrorists. But ISIS is just taking credit for shit just to scare the shit out of everybody. I don't think ISIS had anything to do with it. Uh, the statement did not mention the name of the bomber. Salman Abedi, a man, Manchunian, Manchunian of Britain. Uh, a Mancunian is somebody from Manchester, a Mancunian. He's a Briton. He's born in Britain of Libya descent. Safi Rose Rousseau. The eight-year-old girl that this asshole killed was, her name was Safi Rose Rousseau. Safi Rose Rousseau. Ariana Grande is okay. Somebody mentioned that this could be a pretense to invade Iran. Um, I think it's just a pretense to increase militarism. Uh, whether, I don't believe it's a false flag. It doesn't seem like a false flag to me. Seems like, you know, all these elements are... The latest terror bombing is being used to advance a right-wing political agenda, of course, giving rise to questions as to the degree of foreknowledge and even active involvement of the state. The escalating turn to domestic repression in the U.K. is bound up with the preparation of new and even bloodier imperialist crimes, right? We need, we need to go bomb more Muslim lands. Let's just pick another country. Fuck it. Who cares? Um, I don't know. Indonesia. A lot of Muslims in Indonesia. Let's invade Indonesia, right? I'm sure that'll help terrorism. The escalating turn to domestic repression in the UK bound up with the preparation of new and even bloodier imperialist crimes. The Manchester attack provided U.S. Trump with an opportunity to deliver a thuggish speech from Israel demanding that the terrorists and extremists and those who give them aid and comfort be driven out of our society forever. What this means in practice is the pursuit of war in Syria, an alliance with Saudi Arabia, more you know, bombs over Yemen, more bombs into Yemen's heart, killing more children. 
KDAR and other sponsors of Sunni terrorist movements. So this is we're in alliance with the Sunni terrorist movements, right? Wahhabism, Salifa, Saudi Arabia, KDAR. Up to 5,000 military personnel are being deplo deployed to police key locations. May, the Prime Minister May, I guess her name is May, Operation Temper, I mentioned that in the beginning. Uh, the June 8th general election would now proceed under the barrel of a gun. You're not allowed to have any more campaigning. Campaigning is being called off. So it is fucking with the election. So that's always, but there's always attacks before and after elections. Uh, here, it happened here. The Irish and the Germans uh, were about to vote in 1855. And right before Election Day, the no nothings attacked the Irish and the Germans. So it was racist. That's how racist it was. We at one time didn't think of Europeans as us. Only the English speakers were the only ones we related to. So the bomber, 22-year-old Salman Ramadan Abedi, packed his device with nails, nuts, bolts to inflict the maximum carnage on his victims, taking 22 lives. Said he injured almost 120 here. The fact that Grande has a predominantly youthful audience meant that 12 of the dead were children. Twelve dead kids, including the youngest named so far, Safi Rose Roussos, who was only eight years old. Telegraph columnist Allison Pearson tweeted, we need a state of emergency as France has. We need internment of thousands of terror suspects now to protect our children. Then the election campaigning was cut off and remains suspended today while May is left to speak unchallenged as the supposed guardian of the nation's safety. So that's perfect. All these right-wing dictatorships, the right-wing uh, Muslim terrorists are happy. The right-wing in the fucking UK is happy, right? Just ramp it up, ramp it up. More militarism, more security, more, uh, you know, abridgment of uh, civil liberties. And, um, and let's bomb some more Muslims. Let's create some more fucking terrorists. I'm sure that had nothing to do with it, and I'm sure they're not pissed off about that. I would like to know his direct motive. If it's just a general, you know, the Crusaders are bad, there isn't much you could do with that. Um, he's also dead, and so as much as you'd like to go after this person or that person, yeah, unless the planners are in the country, unless, you know, the Bank of America was the one to finance them, I don't think you could do much with the financiers or the uh, people who supported him if they're not in the country. So... Those are the avenues that they'll go after. Now, what is very likely is they'll continue to victimize people that didn't do shit, increase the discrimination, and possibly continue the bombings of Muslim lands, which are all related to why Salman, Ramadan, Abedi probably got radicalized. Those are the underlying causes. You know, for good or ill, the government is the omnipresent, omnipotent teacher. It teaches us by example. And if the United States and Britain likes to go around killing people, asking questions later, shoot first, ask questions later, you're going to have an entire world doing the same shit. So I think we could do better. And, um, you know, RIP to the victim, Safi Rose Roussos, and RIP to um, Noir in Yemen. She was an eight-year-old girl, too. And there was 30 civilians killed in that attack. The first airstrike of Trump's 30 people were killed. Civilians, innocents, people that had nothing to do with terrorism whatsoever. And, uh, but there was, she was the daughter of a terrorist, maybe. So that's what Trump said. He said he was going to do that. And that's a fucking war crime. Okay? It's a fucking war crime. Uh, if you don't think, you don't give a shit about killing an 8-year-old girl in Yemen, but you care about an 8-year-old girl in Britain, well, you're a fucking racist. And that's discrimination. Uh, both of those lives, both of those peoples are, they're equally valuable. They're equally invaluable. So, that's everything we know that I know so far about the Manchester Arena bombing at the Ariana Grande concert.